All right, target earnings are out. It is not good at all. It is following the same suit as what we saw on Walmart. Walmart dropped 10% yesterday or about 10.97%. The biggest drop in one day in Walmart since 1987. Now, when I say that, that sounds kind of crazy because you're like, tech stocks are down 20, 30% every day. Like what's going on? How is that the biggest drop in, in almost 40 years? Because it's Walmart. It's a store that people invest in. It's almost like it's this pure value. People don't expect it to grow like crazy, go down like crazy. It's just Walmart. It's supposed to be there, almost like a cash-like position and it got pretty hit. So here's Walmart right here. This is where we were. Uh, we were at 123, or sorry, we were at 148, boom, 135, and then it went down another 6% down to 121. Uh, and I'll talk about what happened in a second, but the reason I'm making this video is because Target got hit even, <laughs> that's a, it's, it's a bad, uh, look, it's, it's rough. So Target was at 221, and it dropped to 159, dropped about 25% today. Now, if you look at Target's overall chart target hit a high of 265 around november 30th 2021 that's when the entire market was up uh the last time it was trading around the 159 ish range we have to go back to january 29th 2021 which means from january 29th 2021 we had a year's worth of gains destroyed in literally seconds when the earnings came out in the pre-market today. I mean, this is just, this is the nature of the stock market. I mean, if you were buying Target at $200, 250 or 215 or even 195 it's like any buying after January 21st, 2021, you're down. Um, and, and you know, this it's what happens in the stock market. So now, why is this ultimately happening? First of all, the number one reason is the cost of inventories are going up, right? So uh, uh, the, uh, the company said this quarterly profits got hit by supply chain problems, higher fuel costs, and lower than expected sales of discretionary merchandise. We'll talk about that in a second. The big box retailer said it saw a healthy customer, but a shift to experience-based purchases, such as toys for birthday parties and luggage for trips. And they reiterated uh, its revenue forecast. Things are getting more expensive because of supply chain issues. As a result of supply chain issues, companies have to pay more for those things. Walmart and Target. What do they do? They sell stuff. They don't have AWS servers. They don't, you know, they don't have this trillion dollar company inside of their company. They sell things. Buy low, sell high. Right now they're buying high and they're not selling that much higher because prices are going up. And to the company's credit, we're going to listen from the CEO in a second. They're not passing the, the cost on consumers, which is, I think is actually very commendable right now because they don't want consumers to feel that they're being price couched. So that's one of the first problems they're having. The second uh, sort of issue that they're having is higher fuel costs, obviously energy. You know, when you're transporting millions of goods every single day uh, from one place to another, whether it's in the air or whether it's through buses, um, that's ultimately going to affect your your uh, cost structure because now you have all the stuff that you have to pay for which is also not good because you have to pay for a lot more energy just to transport stuff which means the cost of those things the margins of them are essentially going to go down and finally lower discretionary purchasing what is a discretionary purchase a discretionary purchase is essentially you have some income that you can spend in a more disposable way meaning it's not like a toilet paper right everyone has to buy toilet paper um unless you use water or whatever a bidet whatever it's called uh, but 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 you don't need the newest TV. You don't need the newest Xbox. You don't need the newest video game. Like you don't need some of these things that Target really sells. And Target is not a grocery store. Walmart is not a grocery store. They have groceries. That's a part of their business. But they're not shop right or stop and shop. And uh, if you're international outside from the United States, comment below the grocery store you go to shop at. Um, I know some around the world, but those are coming, some of the big ones in the United States. So when people go into Walmart and Target, it's like, yeah, they're kind of looking for food, but they're really looking for something. And the consumer base is so strong. Demand is so strong. It's actually why the CPI sucks because demand is still high and there's still supply chain problems. So that means people are still buying, which means prices are going to go up. So we've got to get demand to go lower. But demand is still high. It's just people aren't spending that much in terms of the discretionary purchases. Um, they're, they're buying more of the, the stuff that they actually need. So let's hear the Target CEO kind of talk about what happened on earnings. And I'm wondering when you're thinking about profitability versus maintaining market share, could you have raised prices? What would have happened if you raised prices to soften the, the margin hit that you were taking because of all the uh, the increased expenses? Would you have? Did you feel at the time if you raised prices uh, that you would have lost customers? They would have. They would have resisted. There. I mean, it must be very difficult yeah. to, to, to set prices. Yeah. And then the other thing is, do you when you hear all the rhetoric out of Washington. Gouger, 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 gouger. Was that in the back of your mind that, that when when they blame all the inflation on greedy U.S. corporations, is that in the back of your mind? I can't raise prices to, to, to maintain my own margins because of this? Joe, you know, what's been in the back of my mind is one, taking care of those guests and those families that depend on us for value and affordability each and every day. And certainly during a time of inflation, 
That's more. It's a very politically correct answer, but to be honest, it's the right answer. You don't want to get into politics here. You want to be like, hey, we're for the consumer. We're not raising prices because we care about the consumer. If I'm a loyal shopper at Target, I, l I would like to hear that, you know, and that keeps me loyal in the long run. Important than ever. And taking care of our teams. So it's a seasoned suit on this CNBC interview. You know, we've been really focused on making sure we surgically and selectively pass on some costs where we can, but we've got to make sure right now we provide value for that consumer who is, again, still shopping in our stores and still using our site. So it's a balance. So you won't do it this quarter either. You won't get uh, you won't get prices more in line with your costs yeah. this quarter either. Just to this, we're still going to have some of the same challenges in the second quarter. We certainly expect those to moderate over the balance of the year as we rebalance our inventories and look at opportunities to improve efficiency. But we're going to continue to stay focused on protecting the consumer and those guests who shop our stores, provide them great value because they are still shopping our stores. Yep. And we're seeing great resilience with the consumer. You know, I talked about TVs being exchanged for luggage. You know, those small appliances that were you know, in everyone's shopping basket over the last couple of years, you know, those are being replaced by consumers who are shopping for more toys. Because Becky, right now, they're going to birthday parties for the first time in a couple of years. Yeah. So they're still spending. It's a consumer who comes to Target to shop all of our categories. Yeah. But we're seeing a shift in what they shop and how they're shopping right now. So as you can see, we know they are shopping. It's just a question of why they are shopping or, or what things they're spending their money on and how it's different than uh, toys. And now the discretionary income thing is important there because if they're not shopping for TVs, but they're shopping for birthday toys, well, TVs are more expensive than birthday toys. And that means there's going to be less profits for Target if they're not selling that many TVs. So you've got supply chain issues, you've got inflation issues, you've got consumer demand that is there, but the consumer demand is shifting from discretionary items to different types of items that are less profitable. And you've got rising costs for these big box retailers that don't want to put the cost on the consumer because you know, you could say it's a moral thing. They don't want to make it hard for the consumer, but in general, it's a business argument, right? You don't want consumers leaving your store or going somewhere else. You don't want that brand loyalty going away. Inevitably, some things are going to get more expensive, but you don't want to just unload all those costs on the consumer. So not good for the big box retailers. Costco took a big hit as a result of this. Let's go to Costco real quick. Uh, I think as soon as Target came out, Costco was not safe. I mean, Costco was at 600 a couple of weeks ago, and now it's at 434. It was at 612 on April 29th, not even, yeah, just about three weeks ago. And, um, you know, it's, it's been dropping the past couple of weeks and it's down 11% today because of this news as well. Costco is a big box retailer as well. Obviously, Target, Walmart, Costco, they'll compete with each other. Costco more of whole food, uh, wholesale um, um, orders and things you can pick up. But they sell the same TVs as well. And, you know, if Costco is cheaper than Walmart or Target, then people might go to Costco if, these, if those costs are imposed on them. So it's really a game of just like, how do you manage costs right now while we get through inflation? And ultimately, if we're able to get through inflation, then these things are going to get better. But it's going to take time to see that happen. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about big box retailers and the future for them? Looking forward to reading them. I'll see you in the next one.